Hi guys, how are you doing? This is a new video series that we are starting right now. It's called using CSRF tokens with Golang for enhanced security. So we've just completed um, a complete video series on JWT tokens in uh, with Golang, right? So if you've not seen it, go check it out. JWT authentication with Golang. And um, here I have my server running. So I'll give you a short demo of the project and then I'll explain to you what we're going to do and then we'll actually start building the project. I have my server running on localhost 9000. So I'm on my register route. Uh, in my postman if i send it in the post uh, request uh, i'll get two cookies i'll get an auth token and i'll get a refresh token uh, these are quite standard right and in my headers uh, i receive a csrf token as well so this is uh, this is the secret sauce and this is what we want to be working with in this video so uh, let me take you to <coughs> the diagram so uh, in the in the previous series that we just did the jwt uh, authentication series uh, some people pointed out that you know uh, JWT is very easy to hack, right? Uh, some people might just take the token and then put it in uh, JWT.io website and just get all the information out easily and then start using the password. Um, now, it's not uh, from my experience, it's not that easy to hack because uh, you can always use a secret key. So, secret key will add some noise into the token, which is basically some ex extra information that makes the token uh, difficult to uncode or decode. Sorry. So you can use a secret key and I've already shown you in that series how to use uh, the secret key where to, where to use it, right? But let's say if somebody had a tool which could also bypass a secret code that you're using in your JWT token, right? So uh, what we're doing here is we're making things even more secure and this is more or less the industry standard on how to actually build a very secure Golang server. So here we'll be using uh, we'll be using the RSA algorithm to create a private key and a public key, a, a, P, uh, a key pair we'll create. And this uh, public key is what we'll uh, embed in our JWT token as a secret key. And then whenever we get the JWT token, we'll compare it with our RSA private key and only when they uh, match, only then we'll uh, approve the token, right? So I hope that makes it extremely secure. Now, because there's no way they'll have access to your uh, RSA keys, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, so this, this part makes it almost impossible to hack your system al already, right? But on top of that, we'll use CSRF tokens. So CSRF tokens are short uh, tokens, which are completely unpredictable. And these need to be sent uh, in every subsequent HTTP request that you send to the uh, database. Uh, sorry, to the backend server from the front end or wherever, right? So um, so this, uh, using a CSRF token makes it extremely secure. Like it makes your server extremely secure because you'll need to have a new token is uh, given to you every single time and then you have to use that token for the next uh, HTTP request that you make to the server, right? So this is uh, going to make it, uh, make it almost imprinted, uh, penetrate, imprinted, I don't know, whatever, man. You can't penetrate the backend, basically, right? <laughs> so this is going to make it difficult to penetrate the backend and this is going to make it almost impossible to hack your uh, server, at least, at least uh, you know, for... 99.9 percent .9 of the hackers but there's always that point one person hackers you can't really do much right even websites like facebook get hacked so uh, i wouldn't worry about it really so th this will make it extremely secure so if you do this you're you're sorted i mean um, as as a senior developer or a senior software engineer or a security engineer your job is sorted out here itself all right so uh, let's start now digging into how we'll be building this project so let's take a look at how are we going to approach this program? So here are all the files that we'll have. We'll have our main file, server file, DB file, models file to start with. So our main file, as you know, is our entry point. Then we'll have the server file, which will have all the details for starting the server on a particular host. DB file will have all the logic required to make a connection of the database. And models will have the models for the user. Then we'll have a JWT file and a middleware file. The JWT file basically will have uh, functions to initialize the tokens, create new tokens, check the tokens, refresh tokens, and also revoke tokens. And your middleware will have some, uh, will have a logic handler and auth handler. Logic handle will have all the logic for the logout route and register route and login route. So it's not a very, um, you know, difficult kind of project structure. I'm going to keep things very, very simple because I've already gone into the depth of how to build proper project structure with uh, the JWT authentication series go check it out here we're just going to focus on how to you know create the csrf token how to use these two keys to create the tokens you know just this is just a more secure layer so you can add this on top of that and then you can have something more secure right you can have a complete project anyhow <clears throat> so this is the whole 
uh, system that we're going to follow. Now, one important thing here is that I'm not going to going to be using any uh, framework like uh, Jin or something like that, Jin or Fiber. I'm not going to be using anything like that. I'll just be using HTTP. So, I just want you to, uh, you know. Uh, see a different way of doing things in this particular series because I've already shown you how to use Jin and do the whole authentication GWT thing right in the previous video series so here I'm just going to use HTTP package nothing fancy very very uh, bare bones basic structure and uh, if if you actually really care about security you wouldn't be using frameworks in the first place right you would probably have the HTTP package because that's extremely secure adding any packages on top of any packages or frameworks on top of your Golang project uh, in, introduces space for vulnerabilities and uh, places that hackers can, uh, what do you call it, uh, you know, exploit, let's say, right? So that's why uh, I'll, I'll not use any framework here, uh, but just to show you a different way of doing things, right? So uh, let's get started with the project. Just uh, take a note of this diagram. This is exactly how I'll be, uh, you know, uh, structuring the project, how I'll, I'll be going about the whole project. So just make a note of it. You can come back and refer to it. So let's get started. I just realized that my image was really big and you probably didn't see the diagram properly. I apologize for that. I've now made my image really small in the screen. And I also have this really bad haircut. It's because I had to cut my own hair. Um, because of, uh, you know, I've, since the pandemic, I stopped going to a hairdresser. <laughs> so I've, I've been in the habit of just cutting my own hair. This saves time. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so let's open up our terminal. Let's create the project, right? So I'll head over to the place in my um, project, in my, sorry, uh, laptop where I usually keep my Golang projects. And here we'll create a new directory. So we'll say, Golang CSRF project and we'll cd into it and then we'll just open up the project in VS Code you could be using anything else not a problem and all we have to do now that you can see it on my screen we just have to create a main.go file and main.go file basically has package main you import a couple of things here and then you have your func main right let's start creating the rest of the structure so here we'll have a folder called db a folder called keys a folder called server and uh, that is it, I think. That's it. And inside DB, you have your models folder. So we'll create models folder. And inside our DB, we'll create a new file called db.co. In your server folder, you'll have middleware. And you'll have a file called server.co. Perfect. Now coming back to your main.go file, we'll uh, import log because I need that and I need the server folder, server package basically and I need uh, the db package. So here we can say github. Actually uh, what, we, what we've not done is we have not initialized our uh, project. So we'll have to initialize it. So we'll say um, go mod init github.com slash a kill slash golang csrf project. And this has created a go mod file for us. In case you don't know go mod, it's basically your package.json if you're coming from a JavaScript background. It basically creates, uh, shows the list of all the dependencies you'll have in your project. All right, straightforward. And here we'll give an absolute root because we're not, I'm not in my Go root directory right now. So we'll give an absolute root saying Akhil. I think that's what I, that's the name I gave it. Akhil slash Golang CSRF project. Slash Golang CSRF project. And I need access to DB. And 
I need access to need access to the server and inside server there's uh, going to be a folder called middleware and it'll have a file called my jwt so i need access to my jwt as well so i'll say github.com slash akil slash golang csrf project slash uh, server slash middleware slash my jwt so here are all the things that I need and I'm going to just define uh, quickly define my host and my port for host we're going to say localhost and for port we're going to say 9000 and in my DB um, file I'll have a function called initialize my DB. We need to create that function in our file yet, so I'm just referring referencing it out here, but I've not created it. And here also in my JWT file, I'll have a function to initialize J JWT. Okay, and so if there's an error, I can catch it in my JWT error variable. Let's catch the error. Let's handle the error now. So we'll say JWT error not equal to nil and we'll say log dot print ln error initializing the JWT token. Okay. And we'll log out the error of the actual error. And now all we have to do is start the server. So we'll say server which is basically our server file will have a function called start server where you can simply pass your host and port and it'll start a server on that host and port all right so it makes it very easy to also pass production uh, variables without even using the n uh, file so this is like a shortcut but you can use an end file as well i've already shown you in the previous uh, jwt authentication series how to use the end file and let's catch the error here so in case you're new to this channel guys there are more than 100 videos on golang on my channel so this is just one of those series there's so many more series like this go check them out print ln error starting the server okay and you just log out the error as well. So you'll say server error. Perfect. So our main.go file is complete. And now we'll start working on our server and db.go files. Uh, but this video has gone slightly uh, over time. So I will have to continue this in the next video. Uh, do subscribe to this channel if you've not subscribed yet till now. So that you come to know when the next video of the series comes out. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next episode.